If you want to make your voice sound better in DaVinci Resolve, you can use some built-in effects with some predefined presets. These predefined presets are easy to use and can be a good starting point. I'll show you a step-by-step -step guide with DaVinci Resolve. Create a new project and import your audio files. You can also import video files that have audio. The process of bettering audio in the video or pure audio works the same way in DaVinci Resolve. After importing the file, go to the cut screen. In the cut screen, drag the imported file to the timeline. You will get a separate section for audio and video in the timeline. If it is an audio-only file, drop it in the audio area. Things will be placed automatically in the right section for audio with video. After taking the audio in the timeline, click on the Fairlight tab. Fairlight is the audio processing engine in DaVinci Resolve and all the audio editing things will be done here. The waveform is not clearly visible in the timeline, so I will drag it to make it bigger. The audio sample I have is a mono track. There is an issue in DaVinci with the mono track. The overall volume of the mono track is lower than the track itself. So when you export the audio file after all the processing, you may find it confusing. We will have no such issues with the stereo track, and I will convert it to a stereo track. Right-click on the track and change the track type to stereo. Then right-click on the clip and click Clip Attributes. Change the format to stereo and set the embedded channel on it. You do not have to go through this stereo conversion process if your track is already a stereo track. I will expand the track a bit horizontally in the timeline. Let's hear the original audio a bit. You can adjust any toolbar by dragging and repositioning as before. A new addition to these meters is a slider-like icon. This icon on the playback meter will let you set the volume level during playback. You can double click and see its current value. Well, there are some improvements needed on the audio. For example, it has a bit of white noise or hissing, and the overall volume level needs to be increased. I will take care of these issues with some more improvement. The first step will be to reduce noise which can be done through a noise reduction effect. You can add an effect in DaVinci Resolve from a couple of places. The mixer panel has an option to add effects through the plus icon. It can be a convenient option to add effects other than Fairlight. For Fairlight effects, this effects tab is more convenient. Click the effects tab and find noise reduction. Drag noise reduction to this track area. Remember, when you drag something in this area, it applies to the whole track. The waveform with a red border on the right is called a clip. I want the noise reduction to be applied on the entire track, so it is important to note where you are dropping the effect. After dropping the noise reduction window, a pop-up appears where you can adjust various settings. I will drag this pop-up to the side and hide the effects tab to see the waveform better. If I play this audio, we will hear how it sounds with current noise reduction settings. You can adjust any toolbar by dragging and repositioning as before. A new addition to the... After noise reduction, the actual tone of the voice is a bit changed. The reason is I have not provided any noise sample to DaVinci, and it's applying its own algorithm to detect noise. The best thing to do is to give DaVinci a noise sample. With a noise sample, DaVinci works better on removing that kind of noise. You have to switch to range selection or edit mode to give a noise sample. Click on this eye icon to switch to edit selection mode. From the timeline, you have to select a noise only part. That noise is present all over your audio that you want to remove. I will choose that noise from the beginning, but it can be from anywhere. I have some hissing noise all over the audio, and I will select that noise from the start. When you are in edit selection mode, make sure to select when the cursor icon is I, not the white triangles as it is now. These triangles appear when your mouse is over the white line and lets you adjust the volume. Now the cursor appears as I, and I will drag it to select only some noise. After selecting the noise, you have to make it a loop. Click the loop button, and it will become red when active. To play selected audio in a loop, the regular play button will not work. You have to press the Alt forward slash to play that audio in the loop. While the audio is playing in the loop, click the Learn button. Either the Learn button will turn gray again when the learning is complete, or you can click on the Learn when the loop is played a couple of times. 
There is no problem with clicking this learn button multiple times, so ensure the audio is played while the learn button is on. Another thing about this learning process is it is for manual mode. Noise reduction can be done both in manual mode and auto speech mode. For consistent white noise, the manual model works better. You can also check the auto speech mode and see which mode works better. To hear how the audio sounds after noise reduction, I have to get out of the only noise selection. Double click inside the clip, and now the whole clip will be selected. If I play now, I will hear the sound after noise reduction. During playback, make sure the learn button is gray. If it is in learning mode and I play the full audio, it will mistake my voice as noise. You can adjust any toolbar by dragging and repositioning as before. A new addition to these meters is a slider-like icon. This icon on the playback meter will let you set the volume level during playback. You can double click and see its current value. You can also adjust the slider here. The recording meter slider works similarly to set the microphone recording level. I feel the manual mode worked better with the time smoothing off. If the default settings are not working well to reduce noise, you can increase the threshold, sensitivity, and ratio. You can also increase the dry slash wet ratio. Though you should not be too aggressive with these settings, otherwise, your audio will become strange sounding. You can double click on these knobs to reset them to their default values. There are some presets available to reduce specific kinds of noise. You can also check those if you have that kind of noise. As I had consistent white noise, manual mode with learning technique works better. You can cross out the pop-up window when you are done with adjusting the effect settings. Crossing out the effect does not mean the effect has become ineffective. The effect is there, only the pop-up is not showing in front. You can see which effects are active in the mixer panel. If you mouse hover over the effect name, you will see a red dot meaning the effect is on. If you click on the dot, the effect will become inactive. If you click this icon after the dot, it will open up the pop-up. You can now see the effect is inactive in the pop-up window. The effect becomes active again if I click the gray dot to red. DaVinci Resolve is a very powerful software with different options all over the place. You have to spend some time exploring such things at the beginning, and you will be invincible later. Noise reduction is the first basic step to making your sound better. The next step will be equalization. Scroll down a bit in the mixer, and you will find the EQ with a blue line. Double-click and the EQ settings pop-up will appear. EQ is the process of boosting or cutting specific frequencies. In this video, I am not discussing all the details of frequency manipulation. Instead, I will use built-in EQ presets which work pretty well in most cases. Play the audio and shuffle between the presets to check which one sounds better. You can adjust any toolbar by dragging and repositioning as before. A new addition to these meters is a slider-like icon. This icon on the playback meter will let you set the volume level during playback. You can double click and see its current value. You can also adjust the slider here. The recording meter slider works similarly to set the microphone recording level. Let me record something quickly and adjust the slider. So you see how the voice is changing a bit with the EQ. I think male lav finisher sounds best for my case, but you should check yourself which one sounds alright for your case. Manipulating frequency is done using the bands, but I will cover these concepts in a dedicated EQ video. You can also change the EQ type, which varies slightly with the boost amount. Choosing a particular equalizer type is unimportant, I am showing you the available options. Cross out the EQ pop-up when you choose a preset. Notice the shape of the blue line of EQ in the mixer has changed. It shows the shape you set in the EQ pop-up. After EQ is done, you have to set the dynamics of the audio for better sound. You will find dynamics in the mixer panel just above the EQ. Dynamics is the green diagonal line. Double-click inside the dynamics box and the dynamics pop-up will appear. Dynamics means the difference between your louder and quieter sounds. You can either close the gap between those through the compressor or do the opposite through the expander. Either you can manually adjust the settings, or you can use the built presets. I will play the audio and switch between the presets. The goal is to find the ideal preset which makes the sound better. You can adjust any toolbar by dragging and repositioning as before. A new addition to these meters is a slider-like icon. 
This icon on the playback meter will let you set the volume level during playback. You can double click and see its current value. You can also adjust the slider here. The recording meter slider works similarly to set the microphone recording level. Let me record something quickly and adjust the slider. I feel the basic preset is working best for my situation. So the key is you check with different presets and find out which sounds best to you. You can check through the inspector to see which audio effects you have applied so far. Click on the track header area to select the track. Remember this is the clip area, and it is possible to set different effects on the clip. Though for this example, I have only one clip in this track, so it does not matter. But it is important to understand the difference between a clip and a track. While the track is selected, click on the inspector. On the effects tab, you will see which effects you have applied on the track. I applied noise reduction, and that is here. EQ and dynamics effects are in the mixer panel, hence not appearing here. For dynamics and EQ, it is important to notice the line color. If the color becomes gray, it means that the effect is off. A single click will turn the effect off. Double click will open the settings pop up. As the line is gray, the effect is off. Clicking again on the box will turn on the effect. The next thing we have to do is to adjust the volume level. To do that, you have to normalize the clips. Right click on the clip region and choose to normalize audio levels. The target level for voiceover can be between minus 5 to minus 7. As I applied the compressor through dynamics, my audio levels became a bit uniform. So a peak of minus 5 is okay. For music production, you can normalize to a higher level. You can adjust any toolbar by dragging and repositioning as before. A new addition to these meters is a slider-like icon. This icon on the playback meter will let you set the volume level during playback. You can double click and see its current value. You can also adjust the slider here. The recording meter slider works similarly to set the microphone recording level. After normalizing, the volume level is set perfectly and the hissing noise also increases. The reason is that normalize acts as a volume controller. So if you increase volume through normalization, the noise will also increase. To fix this problem, I will apply the learning method again. I will give DaVinci this increased noise sample and it will be able to remove that. You can train DaVinci Resolve with new or increased noise as you find them. The main thing to consider is if it degrades sound quality significantly. You can adjust any toolbar by dragging and repositioning as before. A new addition to these meters is a slider-like icon. This icon on the playback meter will let you set the volume level during playback. You can double click and see its current value. You can also adjust the slider here. The recording meter slider works similarly to set the microphone recording level. Let me record something quickly and adjust the slider. The noise is gone and the sound quality is okay. I am happy with the output and it's time to export the audio file to use in other projects. Click on the delivery tab at the bottom. As this is only an audio file, I do not need to export it as a video. If you are exporting video, then keep this option checked. For audio, I have to select a format. I prefer WAV as it is uncompressed and a lossless way to transfer audio across systems. Add this to the render queue and set the name and location to save the file. Click Render All, and the rendering process will start. It will take some time to render the file, depending on how long the audio is. When the render is complete, you will find the audio file and can use it in the projects you want. So this was the process of making the audio quality better in DaVinci. If I summarize, it is noise reduction, EQ, dynamics, or compression, normalize, and noise reduction again. I hope this video is helpful to you. Thanks for watching and see you next.